right now we have a young man by the name of uh, Nate Butler, and uh, boy, he had a wonderful experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a cartoonist in Albuquerque. So please help me welcome him to God Answers Prayer. Nate. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Nate, before we go into some of the work that you're doing today, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came to the Lord, and what happened to you. Um, well, I, I guess to, to give you some of the background of, of my work and where it led me, uh, from the time I was very little, I got interested in, in drawing. And I grew up in a, uh, a, a mainstream uh, denominational church. And my parents are really nice people, but the Lord was not, uh, other than on Sundays, the Lord wasn't really talked about a lot in our house. And about the time that I was, shortly after I was confirmed in our church, uh, I started a, a real big doubting period around, I guess I was 12, 13, 14. It's a bad time anyway, that, that, that age and uh, adolescence. And I... I fell away from the church and went through, uh, well, as it ended up, 13 years of progressive. I finally progressed into a pretty militant Madeline Murray O'Hare style atheist, uh, pr a pretty rabid atheist. And uh, there's, you know, you hear a lot of testimonies about, about people that go through that and uh, rather than get into uh, a lot of the the gory details. There's a, a singer, Mylon Lefevre, that's mm -hmm. done concerts here in town that he says he he always has to kind of rein himself back because, you know, you, you get so it's kind of like that the war stories, you know, you start telling about and you almost get farther into that than I would rather spend more time talking about the Lord because uh, I went through, it was pretty awful by the end of that 13 years. And, uh, and of course, I was... I, had a certain amount of Bible training and very quickly found out that uh, what I knew about the Bible was quite often more than some of the people who would try to witness to me, unfortunately, and, uh, and always kind of fancied myself very intellectual and would, and would, and arguing with these people. And, uh, so, but by the end, and I did, I would sit and have these very long philosophical sort of arguments with people telling them about why there was no God and why that they were, uh, you know, just are even archaic to think so. But by the end, uh, it just, it got rabid. There was just, it was just talk, you know, when people would come to me and want to talk to me about the Lord, I would just be vicious and really awful with them. And, uh, and it was, I, as I look now, and in, in the meantime, I grew up in the East Coast, but the Lord had brought me out here to the, the desert, although, of course, I didn't know it and wouldn't have <laughs> thought so if you had told me at the time. But uh, I came out here <clears throat> and had an opportunity to get into working on more of my, uh, my artwork here than I had in the East. And uh, so the last year uh, before I came to know the Lord, uh, there was a... Uh, uh, it was the year that they had the Shroud of Turan here that they were, and I started out, you know, I was, I, I hope that they prove that thing is fake, and then started having thoughts like, well, wouldn't it be kind of neat if it was real? And I thought, well, what am I thinking about, you know? <laughs> and then that was the year that the Pope came to America, and all these people came out in the street, and I was like, you know, that Pope. And then when all these people started showing up, and everyone was so happy to see him, I was like, well, that's really kind of neat. And then I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why am I thinking that? And I really thought I was losing my mind because after 13 years of just not believing any of this to have these thoughts start to come to my head. And my uncle is a, a Episcopal minister back in Vermont, and I had gone to see him, I think it was like my senior year in high school when I was really kind of in my most militant uh, atheistic period. And he said, come on up to Boston and we'll go see a show. <clears throat> well, hair was real big at that time. And I thought, oh boy, we'll go see hair. Well, he took me to see Godspell, and I thought, <laughs> brother, Godspell, okay, we'll go see Godspell. Well, I really enjoyed the music, and as we left in the lobby, I bought the album, and he was like really encouraged, and I said, hey, don't get your hopes up. The music is, is nice, but I'm not getting into the words or anything like that. Well, I kept this album with me, and as, I, as the Lord was bringing me closer and closer, and I was, like I said, I really thought I was losing my mind, <clears throat> I thought, well, I, I just wanted to listen to things that had to do with the Lord, and I had one of these little, you know, those plastic sound sheets they send you in the mail, and it was like, because I was coming up on the, the holidays on Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I had one of those, and there was some, there was Christian songs in that, and I thought, well, I got this to listen to, and I have Godspell. 
and it was almost exactly a month before Christmas. This is seven years ago now, eight years ago. I was, I was in my, I had lived in this little apartment by myself, and I, st I listened to the whole Godspell album, and they got to the end, you know, after the crucifixion, and they have that wonderful, where they, they, he sings about, oh God, I'm dead, and then it, it gets kind of quiet, and then they start singing, long live God. And I started singing along with the record, long live God, and at the time, I, I just, it felt like it just a chill to me, but now I know it was the Holy Spirit just came right mm -hmm. down on me while I was singing this music, and for the first time in 13 years, I went down on my knees, mm -hmm. and I was crying, and I was like, and I thought, I don't know what to pray. And I don't, but I was just, I was so overcome. It was just still, it still gives me chills now to think about it. It was, it was su such a wonderful experience that just after all the awful things I had done, that the Lord just came down and just, He forgave me. He still loved me. He was still, you know, ready to call me back. And, uh, and I had gone through one year, I had quit from a, a printing place where I was working and, uh, learning about commercial art. And I had done a lot of cartooning before that. And I'd gone through one year of business, you know, as an atheist miserable year, it didn't go well, and, you know, it sounds like, you know, you, a lot of times I hear people tell these stories and I think, yeah, yeah, but it's true, the minute I got into, the, came back to the Lord, and things just really turned around for my business, and it's been, ever since then, it's been, uh, it's been more enjoyable, uh, the, the types of work that the Lord has, has led to me, and there's, there's struggles, because in commercial art, you're called upon to to do a certain amount of work that, because it's advertising, and I'm not saying advertising is inherently bad, but there's just a lot of questionable things that people ask you to do, and there's time, you know, and big clients come to you and say, I want you to do this, and you say, I can't do that for you. And you think, uh, you know, is, and, but the Lord, the Lord is good, Amen. you know, He is, and uh, He's always, He's, he's come through for, uh, and then I, I, did, I went back to church, uh, some people encouraged me to, to fellowship again, because I was one of those people, I said, even if I was ever to go back to church, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't go to church with, with those hypocrites, and, uh, but a, a brother here in, in, or in Albuquerque told me, well, you need to, and I did go back to a church that my uncle had, uh, the Episcopal minister had visited when he was out here, that's where I met my wife, I have a wonderful wife, and two stepdaughters now, so mm. the Lord's been good. That's a beautiful testimony. Oh my God. Mm. Could, could we see some of your work, Nate? Sure. This is uh, some of the work that, uh, that I've done. This is uh, the portfolio that I take around to show. This is uh, some of these first ones are the Mexico Museum of Natural History was doing a fundraiser and I did these baby dinosaurs mm. for them to uh, <laughs> the, the theme of it was that uh, they're orphanosauruses and they needed a home so that's why they all look pathetic and they're all sad and crying and uh, mm. so I did a set of six posters for them it started out that they just wanted one little character and so I did them six mm. and said pick and they couldn't so we ended up doing all, <laughs> all six of them then I've done some work for some uh, magazines here locally this is from the local New Mexico trip a magazine. I did a thing about the uh, uh, tailgate parties. Just starting to get into some national publications. This is Penny Power magazine. I just this is in the current issue that's just out now that I just did. Uh, do a lot of work for the Albuquerque Dukes for their baseball mm -hmm. team. And uh, as a matter of fact, the the new issue that's just out. Uh, L. Henry, whose work is here yes. in the studio, did the cover for it for the uh, the third time. And uh, these are some things that I had done internally for the magazine. Creative Computing Magazine is another national magazine that I've done some work for. And uh, I don't know if you want me to go through everything that's in here or uh, State Fair. I did uh, Albuquerque Little Theater. These are a lot of the things that I've done here around town. And then more work out of town. I've done some work for some cable places out in, uh, in California. The local, uh, the Albuquerque Hungry Bear. I've done some work for the, uh, that club and uh, Business Journal. The uh, Albuquerque Silver's basketball team. This was kind of a funny cover. It was that uh, parody of the uh, the uh, Star Wars thing, mm -hmm. where we had uh, mm -hmm. only we have Norm Ellenberger floating yeah. in the sky instead of Darth Vader. And uh, I used to do a lot of work for the Business Journal cartoon panels and whatnot. And then I've done some books. These are some uh, a book that I did. Excuse me, please. What was that? It was a, a humor book and uh, more, another humorous illustration. Mm -hmm. station break and then we're going to be back with more
Stephanie. On God Answers Prayer. But continue calling 883 1111, 983 1111. Remember, you can call that number 24 hours a day. We'll be back with Mr. Nate Butler as he continues glorifying the King of Israel. Well, welcome back to God Answers Prayer. We've been uh, talking to Mr. Nate Butler over here. He's a cartoonist in uh, Albuquerque, and uh, he, you just heard his testimony. You were saying, uh, Nate, as we went for a station break. Yeah, one of the exciting things that's just recently happened is that the, the Lord has, has given me the opportunity, uh, opened some doors for me to do... Uh, national comic books. I've just started doing work for Archie Publications. These are uh, uh, two of the books that I've just done. And the really neat thing about this for me is that the Lord has uh, gave me a vision several years ago about doing Christian comic books. Uh, there was, I've, I've been a comic book collector for quite a while, but really had to stop collecting, quite frankly, because uh, the, not just because of the, the sex and violence, but the, the, some of the mainstream comics, the ones sure. that, if you go into a comic store and if you complain about the type of material they carry, uh, you know, they'll say, well, all our adult comics are all over here, you know, all the drug comics are all the gay comics are over here, and all the, the good stuff, you know, that we let the kids see is mm -hmm. over here. But you go over and look at the, the mainstream comics, and they're the ones that you can buy in your convenience stores. The heroes, and I was telling some friends this last night, and they just couldn't believe it. There are comics where these heroes, I mean, the, the, the good red, white, and blue type of heroes, literally, there's one comic where they call upon a demon. They hold a seance, and they call a demon forth mm -hmm. to help them battle whatever it is that they're battling. I mean, I just didn't get much farther than the first couple of pages where they did this. And the Lord has really impressed upon me that, I mean, there are comics out there already that, uh, as a matter of fact, Al Hartley, who is an Archie artist, uh, has done Archie Christian comics before, but they're more for uh, they're more for kids like in a Bible study group, that yeah. kids that are already believers. And the Lord has really impressed upon me the need for comic books that are like almost packaged, like something like MTV, something that just looks really now really good that kids would say, yeah, I wouldn't be ashamed to, to read that, you know, if they were non-believers or believers or something that a, a kid mm -hmm. who is a believer could say to one of his friends, here, just read this, something that's like the Marvel style, a real professionally packaged comic book, but that really drives home the word of the Lord, that the, mm -hmm. that the message is positive and that it's, and like I was saying to, to somebody, it's, if, if the, the comp, there were so many little pieces in the puzzle, Godspell, these the different people that just would say one thing that led to my salvation, that if one of these comic books could just be one little piece Amen. in one person's puzzle that led them back to the Lord, it would all be worth it. And so uh, through doing the uh, comic books, doing I've done stuff for Archie and then Marvel Comics mm -hmm. does uh, the Heathcliff comic book and I've been doing some writing on that. I feel like the Lord has really been putting me through a long training period to get the background, the publishing experience, to learn how the work looks, to make the contacts, and I'm, I'm trusting in the Lord that, that there's going to be a time when we'll be doing Christian comic books of a kind that uh, we can all be proud of here in this state and nationwide, and that, uh, and that we'll be reaching some people for the Lord. Well, praise God. Well, Nate, I believe that God is truly, truly going to grant you your heart's desire. I believe that he's given you the ability already to do it, and now go to it and do it for the King of Israel. He'll open the doors. Thank, Thank you, you so Blackie. much for being with us. Right now we have Terry Matthews who is ready to sing praises to the King of Israel. Coming up after Terry Matthews will be Pastor Ken jo George as he shares his testimony. Also, he's going to be sharing the Word of God with us uh, on the second hour. But first, here's a song with Terry Matthews. I believe it's from Gospel Greats of New Mexico. Please help me welcome him to Channel 11. <laughs> 